Fallout 76 continues to get me hyped beyond my initial hesitant first impressions. How is it done now? Well, in a recent interview with GameStar Germany, Todd Howard has released some new juicy details that Ultra Hacker 9000, a Reddit user, has meticulously translated for us. There are also some new deets from a recent interview with Multiplayer.it that I translated, and I will be merging the information so it's easy for you all to digest, but check the description of this video for all the sources. So I will be talking about fast travel, ongoing story updates, camps and how you can jail players in them, missions designed to be purely solo, crossplay and more. First though, if you haven't, make sure to join my Discord. We're at 9,000 members and counting and we're all ready to play Fallout 76 together when it's released. The more friends you have, the less chance you'll be the target of griefing and the higher chance you'll be a lion in a field of sheep or even making solo play possible if you join other like-minded individuals. So fast travel will be making a comeback in Fallout 76. A lot of us thought that it would be non-existent because of the always online nature of the game. However, when asked if there will be fast travel, Todd straight up said yes. Yes with a full stop. When asked if there would be mounts or vehicles, he straight up says no. No with a full stop. He adds to both points by saying 76 will be exactly like Fallout 4 in those regards. How will this work for a persistently online game with other players though? Maybe you can fast travel with non group players are around, or maybe you can only fast travel when you aren't in combat. How does it work? If it's just combat, then if you see a player approaching you, you can easily hit the fast travel button and make an escape just in case they have ill intentions. So the pacifist seems to have another option to protect themselves, and those without hours to play can probably jump into 76 and not have to walk around simply enjoying the sights if they don't want to. Overall, I agree with this feature and I think many of you will. For those still concerned about multiplayer though, Todd states that they are not just dipping their toes in, they are jumping straight into the swimming pool with this whole experience. They will not hold back on the multiplayer portions, but those concerned its success will bleed over to Elder Scrolls and Fallout 5, they can rest easy as Todd has stated that for those games, they will be keeping them purely single player. Second is a bit of a negative, but it's good to jam the negatives between positives like a good old compliment sandwich, which is what you up and coming business managers should do. It seems crossplay, which is playing together on different consoles, will not be possible because the team at the moment can't make it work, meaning that if you have an Xbox and your friend has a PS4 or PC, you will not be able to play with them. It's a shame, but it's not unexpected. Beyond the whole host of technical hurdles they'll need to overcome, there is the issue of balance, PC having a, a slight advantage when it comes to aiming. Also, apparently Sony is not being as helpful as they would like, but Bethesda's being optimistic that that will change. So to complete the compliment sandwich, here is some good news. They have completely upgraded every aspect of the game from Fallout 4, the graphics, the controls, the gunplay, the enemy AI, and the overlapping quest structure. There is so much Todd wants to talk about but clearly can't get to. One of them is the hitbox detection. He mentions it's had a complete overhaul and you'd notice it if you compare Fallout 4 with Fallout 76. You have to expect with this kind of improvement and the sheer scale of difference between Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, that this game will be a lot more resource intensive on your PCs, so plan accordingly. Now in Fallout 4, some people had criticism about the RPG elements, saying that some quests were forced into combat where other Fallout games had other roles you could take. Todd understands this and talks about how Fallout 4 got complicated with webs of stories, so they had to simplify it. He's proud, however, that the game is asking interesting questions and the player has a lot of interesting answers. In Fallout 76, Bethesda understands they have a similar opportunity because the game will be connected to the internet the entire time. Even though the game is different with its structure, they know they can update it on a monthly basis to help the community. We knew we'd be getting constant updates, but this almost confirms the fact we will be getting story updates regularly. I don't know about you guys, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel pretty damn good about it. Before finding all this out, Fallout 76 felt a little like a sandbox to have fun with your friends or strangers, but now it's actually 
a growing, evolving world where we can experience the Fallout lore unfold and grow over time. Taking a break from Fallout 76 and coming back half a year later, you'll probably have a completely different experience. So when asked about non-human NPCs in Fallout 76, Todd mentions that there will be robots, terminals, holotapes, and other things to deliver quests. Also, there will be events that appear in the world periodically and can be joined in by all players. There are also radio stations as well. I'm not sure exactly how these will function, but you can probably expect them to be giving you quests like you got from Fallout 4 radio stations. Obviously, this is all hard for designers to manage, but it creates a situation where the player has tools to make their own story. Todd mentions when asking people about their favorite moments of Fallout 4, that it was most often stories that collide together. He mentions a story where he was doing a mission where a raider attacked and a super mutant behemoth came over the hill and then a vertebrate came by and he met a new companion. So Fallout 76 will aim to go harder in, in that direction with narrative driven by players. Todd is basically saying they have learned no matter how delicious they make a storyline, the most fun players will have is beyond anything they can imagine and plan out themselves. This is Bethesda showing their maturity over other studios. How it will play out for Fallout 76 is yet to be seen, but we can expect mechanics that will make clashing more prominent and interesting. That being said, Radiant Quest will be returning. Radiant Quests are basically quests that have randomly generated objects or locations. I imagine the Gathering of Nuclear Codes questline will be Radiant and a more solid story mission will not be. This feeds into the whole create your own story though as one person might need to visit a junkyard for example for a Radiant Quest while another visits a swamp. They could have drastically different experiences in the game. Now jumping back onto the griefing train, Todd mentions that if someone stops playing the game because another is being a jerk that Bethesda have encouraged the wrong thing so they are working tirelessly to make sure they balance it just right. There is a bounty system in the game right now wherein if a player that doesn't want to get killed is taken down, the player who did it gets a sort of wanted level in the server and that disables him from doing certain things. I imagine these certain things will be using the trading stalls we talked about in my previous video. If you don't know about them, check out my last Fallout 4 video. Basically, you can set up a stall in your base wherein you can place things you craft or find. You can assign a robot to sell it for you when you aren't there. So this murderer can be seen by all players on the server and there is a bounty on his head. Other players can kill him without getting a bounty on their heads because basically they're the agents of justice after all. They are still messing with the specifics of how you get the bounty as it's a complicated thing, but I imagine if it were too easy, you would have griefers jumping in front of you to force you to get the bounty just to mess with your day on the server. It's never going to be a perfect system, but we have to hope at least that it's going to be fun. Regardless, in its current state, you have to expect griefing not to be easy and seemingly not worth it. As shown in the E3 gameplay, you basically get nothing for kills. Also, it is mentioned that low level players cannot be killed. The current limit is up to level five but that could change with balancing, so don't hold me to that. Todd also mentions there are no quests at all focused around player versus player combat, and all of the quests in the game can be completed solo or in a team of four. They aren't rewarding PvP, but the bigger takeaway from all of this is that the missions are designed to be done either solo or in a group of four. I think that means the missions will be scaled to single players or scaled to having a party of four. This is different to what we have previously heard in that you can complete missions solo, but they're designed, all of them are designed for four players. I don't know if it has since changed based on feedback, but saying are playable solo or in a team of four seems pretty definitive. Maybe the level of enemies faced will be reduced or the sheer amount will be reduced, well, maybe both. However, the news that I can play solo is like sweet honey to my ear holes. When talking about camps, you have to wonder what their purpose will be. Well, in the multiplayer.it interview, it stated that the camps can be damaged. We, we kind of expected this and we know they can't be completely destroyed already. This is to stop someone destroying all your hard work completely. It will cost a very low amount to repair everything, nothing like the costs to build. When you go offline, your 
camp will also disappear with you. However, it's mentioned that you need to be able to damage buildings as you can use camps to detain other players. So, if it couldn't be damaged, you could detain someone indefinitely. This is a huge bit of information. You can capture real players and lock them up in your camp. They drop this on us and give us no other information. So how will this work? Do you have to defeat someone where they drop to their knees like in the E3 PvP gameplay trailer then drag them all the way back to your camp? In which case this might work with the bounty system, a, a way to punish players or live out your gimp fantasies, whatever you guys are into. Either way, the fact that it can be damaged leads me to believe you can break yourself out eventually, making it so it's not like that arc game where you can permanently be captured. Now, what about if you build your camp somewhere that has someone else's camp? Well, the world is really huge and apparently Todd thinks it's highly unlikely to ever happen. However, the camp is mobile and you can always pack up and move at any time. So if someone builds where you want to place your camp or has built where your camp was previously before you got back into the server, you can always damage their stuff until they're persuaded to leave or you could come back another time or you can simply take your design and move it somewhere else. In regards to pooling resources, that won't be possible, but players can trade. They can also drop items on the ground for others to pick up. The main way to trade will be through the in-game economy where prices will be decided by the players. We talked about how you can build shops in my last video and this seems to be the main way to share resources in a fair way. Say you're a doctor making a ton of stim packs. You had to invest into those skills by sacrificing others. Maybe you don't have a combat skill that other people have. So if players are going to use your stim packs, you deserve some compensation. If you're playing with friends though and you're find a particularly interesting item, you can drop it for them or trade them for profit depending on how generous you feel. In terms of microtransactions and loot boxes, Bethesda went into it with two goals. First, they didn't want some players to have a DLC and others to not, which would separate them. So to offer DLC for free, they opted to have a microtransaction store that provides interesting cosmetics for those who want to support the game's ongoing servicing. The second goal was to make sure it was never pay to win, so now and into the future, the game will never have anything for sale that gives one player an advantage over another. You can count looking more fabulous as an advantage though, Todd, keep that in mind. Regardless, I for one am in support of this structure. It makes the game a one-off cost for most people and others that wish to support it in the future can help the rest of us continue to get supported for free. So that's it for the new information guys. If you enjoyed the video and want to keep up to date with all things Fallout 76, be sure to like, comment your thoughts and subscribe. Join the Discord if you want to talk to me and other like-minded individuals directly and I will be back very soon with more information and we'll be streaming Fallout 4 robot battles whenever I get the chance. It's a lot of fun guys to so check it out. Take care and stay healthy.